In this video, we're going to be putting together a Linux-powered ARM-based mini PC with 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's also going to support an M.2 NVMe SSD using the all-new Argon One V5 case and the 16 gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi 5. Keep in mind, you can basically go with any version of the Raspberry Pi 5, but really when it comes down to it, I've got some accessories for this new Argon One V5 case because now over on their website, they're actually selling M.2 SSDs and the V5 case also supports their OLED module, which we can actually mount to the unit itself. It's all flush, it all goes together really nicely. But this is gonna give us some real-time information like CPU usage, RAM usage, IP address. You can basically set it up however you'd like. And I've kept my eye out for this new Argon One V5 case for about a month now. It actually just released over on their website. The case itself is made of casted aluminum and it serves as a heat sink for passive cooling if you want to go that route, but it also has a built-in 30 millimeter PWM fan. So we also have some active cooling there. It'll also add two full-size HDMI ports to your Raspberry Pi. We get an additional two USB 2.0 ports up front. It's got a built-in DAC with a 3.5 millimeter mic and headphone jack, an internal USB connection for Zigbee modules, and of course it supports an M.2 NVMe SSD. They actually make two different versions, so you can get one of these with dual M.2 slots, or you can go with the single. The single version is the one that I have here. And overall, this definitely looks like a really nice setup. We've got our daughter board here that connects to the Raspberry Pi 5's USB Type-C and mini HDMI ports, enabling full-size HDMI out the rear and, obviously, USB power input. And like I mentioned, the whole case itself is made of casted aluminum, so it can be used as a passive heat sink, but we've also got that fan there. You really don't have to plug it in if you don't want to. I don't think this thing's going to hit thermal throttle without it, but it'll only come on at a certain temperature once we get the software installed properly. Putting this thing together definitely looks really easy. It comes with everything you need except for the Raspberry Pi. We've got our thermal pads for heat transfer, ribbon cables for the M.2 connection, and what I'm going to be using is the new 16 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 5. So yeah, now they make a 2 gig, 4 gig, 8, and a 16. I was really surprised that they released the 16. Now we did hear about it a while ago when the Pi 5 launched. Uh, we knew we'd probably be getting one because it was in the initial documentation for the Raspberry Pi 5, but I never thought it would really come to fruition. Okay, so the first thing I needed to do was install the included thermal pads on the Raspberry Pi 5. We're going to grab our daughter board here and just plug it right into that USB and two mini HDMI ports on the side of the Pi. And yeah, this is one of my favorite things about the case. It takes those mini HDMI ports up to full size and it makes it a lot more usable for me because I'm always misplacing my mini HDMI cables. Really, I only use them for a camera and the Pi. Now we just uh, put this inside of the midsection and we've still got access to the Ethernet and USB on the rear of the Pi. Plus, once everything's together, we'll still have access to the micro SD card slot. But for this, I'm going to be strictly using an NVMe SSD. I'm just going with the Argon 128GB M.2 SSD. It's right here. Should be able to slide it right in. And again, they do make two versions of this case. So if you need dual M.2s in this, you can definitely get that case. Personally, I only really utilize a single M.2 SSD. Supports up to a 2280. And I've already flashed the operating system to this M.2, so it should boot directly into it. But there's a couple ways you can go about this. If you don't have an M.2 to USB adapter, you can always boot from the SD card on the Pi and then flash it directly from whatever operating system. Let's say you're using Pi OS, you can use the built-in Raspberry Pi imager and do it that way. That would probably be the most simple way to go about this if you don't have an external M.2 to USB adapter. Now I'm going to install the ribbon cable for that M.2. It's going to go directly to the PCIe connector right on the Raspberry Pi. And that's one thing to keep in mind here. There are some cases out there that actually use an NVMe SSD over USB. This is not the case with this. We're running over that PCIe connection. And we can even force PCIe 3.0 to get faster speeds if you want to. The case also comes with a thermal pad for the SSD. We can keep the heat down and the speeds up because in the bottom of the shell, there's actually a cooling plate for that NVMe SSD. So we've basically got everything down here covered. And again, we can still access that SD card slot. It also comes with a little cover for that if you want to just go ahead and block it off. But I'll put this on and then we'll move back over to the top because there's just a couple more things we need to do here. This case basically has three different pieces. We've got the bottom, the midsection, and the top. In the top here, there's a little spot that says Argon 1 V5. 
but this is actually removable and you can use their OLED module right here. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. It is a separate purchase from the case, but what this is going to do is just give us some real time performance stats so we can set it up for CPU usage, temperature. It'll show us our IP address, how much storage we have left, how much RAM we have left. Personally, love having something like this on my cases so I can just glance at it and see what's going on. And it should be relatively easy to install. I believe all we need to do is actually plug it into uh, eight of the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. So it's already basically put together for us. We just need to attach it to the top half of the shell and plug it directly into the GPIO. And we'll have a real-time OLED performance monitor for this case and the Pi. So we'll just go ahead and plug it directly into those GPIO pins. Make sure it's nice and snug. And the top half of the shell does have some pretty strong magnets, but we can also screw this down so it won't go anywhere. But yeah, once it's finished up, I mean, it's definitely a clean looking case. We have that OLED display right there. Two extra USB ports up front. Built-in DAC with that 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Two full-size HDMI ports. Again, got access to the Ethernet, USB 3 and USB 2.0 on the Pi. And over here, there are some antenna outputs. So if you wanted to add some antennas, you definitely could. Overall, not a bad looking setup, but we do need to get some software installed for that built-in OLED. So we're gonna move over to Raspberry Pi OS. And once we're here, we need to install the Argon configuration wizard. Really easy to do so, open up terminal. I've got the command on screen right now. This can take anywhere from one to three minutes depending on your connection. But once it's installed, we'll have it right there on our desktop or we can launch it from terminal. Okay, so now that we've got the Argon configuration wizard installed, we'll go ahead and launch it here. Configure OLED, number one, that's what we wanna do here. You can configure the units, system information, and we can totally uninstall, but we're gonna go with number one. We can switch page every 30 seconds on that OLED. We can configure the pages. I think I'm just gonna go with number one here and see what they have. Pretty sure it's gonna be IP, uh, CPU temp, and things like that. We'll do 15 seconds, and we can exit. The OLED is now on. And with just a glance at that OLED, we can see our RAM usage. It's got our CPU temperature. I've disabled the IP address, but you can get it to kind of go through that also. Time, date, and of course, CPU usage. So far, it's been a pretty nice little setup. As you can see, I mean, it's nice and clean and it's staying really cool also. I did run some thermal tests here and I was able to overclock this 16 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 5 to three gigahertz on the CPU without a GPU overclock. Once I start overclocking the GPU, I can only go up to 2.8. So we're just at three gigahertz on the CPU. And while running a 10 minute stress test from terminal to max out that CPU, the Argon One V5 case, which we have here, only hit a maximum of 46 degrees Celsius. And that's with the active cooler enabled. And as you can see, I've tested their other cases for the Pi 5, along with the Raspberry Pi Foundation's active cooler. With all of these, we never hit thermal throttle with that overclock. So that wasn't something I was really worried about. But seeing it come really close to the Argon Tower Cooler is pretty impressive, if you ask me. And it really comes down to the mass of aluminum we have here, along with that built-in PWM cooling fan. And the last thing I wanted to share with you was just a quick speed test on that NVMe SSD. This is the built-in Raspberry Pi OS SD card speed test. Sequential write, 746,849. Target, only 10,000, so we're super exceeding that. Random write, over 130,000. Target, only 500. And random read, over 172,000, and on that, the target was only 15. So yeah, we're seeing really fast speeds here when you compare them to SD cards. And I knew we would, given that this case does run that NVMe SSD over PCIe. Overall, I do like the look of this new case, and with all of the features it adds, like a built-in DAC and that 3.5mm audio jack, full-size HDMI around back, built-in passive and active cooling, I think this is a really nice little case. And they also have some add-ons like that OLED and some antennas that you can pick up over on their website. Personally, I think it's a solid case for the Raspberry Pi 5. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I figured I'd just go ahead and make a quick video. If you've got any questions about this thing, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.